All right, well, seeing that it is 6.30, I will call the Board of Health meeting for April 23rd, 2019, to order. Uh, we have some things on the dock tonight. It should be uh, uh, actually a fairly quick night, I think, but um, we have an open discussion 6.30, which is right now, which I don't see any public, so I don't think we have any of that. And then we also are going to have a very brief chair report from me. Uh, we have a health agent report from Laura. Um, We'll talk about the um, uh, the pesticide, if there was any update from town council, uh, inspection tracking um, spreadsheet, and the review of our minutes from the last meeting. So kind of a quiet night. Um, with that said, so uh, again, I said my chair report would be very brief, and it, it will be because it needs, I think, to, um, it's a topic that needs to come before this this body at a different time with maybe some a lot better information. And, um, and it, it's really picking up on a lot of what's going on right now, especially with youth in regards to things like e-cigarettes, Juul um, being one of them. I'm sorry, I'm naming naming one name and I don't know the rest. Um, I promise I will name all the names at some point, uh, to be fair. Um, but there seems to be now finally some data coming back on these, which we haven't really had. Not a lot of towns and cities, obviously, across America have had a lot of data. It's such a new product. Anytime a new product comes out, it's like, okay, let's wait a year, yeah. and then we'll get some actual data, and we can see what, what the heck we have in front of us. So I feel like I'm, I'm starting to see, I don't know if, if you all are starting to see as well, come out kind of in trips and drabs, that it's um, coming out very detrimental, especially to youth, especially from a standpoint of um, uh, addiction to it and withdrawals from it. Um, you know, two of the most specific things that we're seeing, as well as the high uh, content of nicotine levels. Um, now, I know we do have a policy in place that you have to be 21 to purchase tobacco products. Uh, flavored tobacco is not an allowable product to be sold. Um, so I don't know the technical classification of these products. Is it? I don't, I don't think it's actually tobacco being used in them. So I don't know if there's if that hits the 21 threshold or not. Um, so that's one of the questions I'd, I'd want to have us look into as well as get some, uh, some maybe we can get somebody in here to talk to us a little bit more about what, what the new findings are, what the new statistics are that are coming out um, in regards to it. So um, that's the only thing I had in my chair report, just something that I'd like to put down for a future uh, meeting. I, I can certainly set that up and try to get, um, try to get somebody in here that can you know, give us a little presentation on it so we can have a little better understanding of it, as well as look at what we already have on the books currently right now and see if that's something that covers it, something that needs to be added to or not from a policy standpoint. Um, so that's all I have. Laura, health yeah. report? I do have. Oh, well, you have one? Well, just, I don't have anything to add. Just yep. to follow up on yours. Oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I do have. Um, a contact at the North Reading Police Department. They have they actually come talk to my public health class at, at Merrimack and a few other public health classes. Um, and they discuss jewels and different and new data on that because they have a community coalition to try to prevent youth from um, starting. Okay. So they do present some data. So if you at all want me to contact them to see if they would be interested in either providing us information or a presentation or something. Well, let me first do this. I actually have an Acosta meeting on Thursday oh, perfect. Okay. Um, to attend, so let me bring that up um, okay. at that meeting and see um, what Erica has in the way of information as far as far as that goes, and maybe some resources as well too. They're, they're a great division, so if they have something kind of queued up and ready to go, they'd be a good perfect. organization to go to. Thank you for reminding me of that. I didn't even think about that. Great. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so, does, don't we have it in the 
town they, they don't sell flavored correct to under is it 21 I don't remember what they, they don't we don't sell flavored tobacco products oh, flavored tobacco. At, at all or is it the jewels is it the flavored and it's, jewels or it's or the um, so we have it you have to be 21 to buy tobacco in yeah. town but we don't allow the sale of, of flavored tobacco oh, flavored at all tobacco. yeah to, to anyone to any age yeah that, so I, again I don't know where this classifies in that if it if it is technically a tobacco, a tobacco product or if it's not um, or if there are other products that are just as that have the um, that are having uh, issues and specifically with the youth that can get around that in, in some fashion I, I just think it's something that you're starting to see a lot of it out there you're starting to see that data roll out and I think it's something that you know board of health probably across the country are going to be looking at quite frankly so I thought it'd be a good thing for us to do in the near future as well anything else comments no okay yeah um, and so for the month of March, we did 38 food um, inspections. That includes inspections and reinspections. Complaints, we had four. Animal inspections, we completed for the year, and we had we did five in March. And for dumpsters, we had two issues that were corrected. For flu, we have si had 16 flu cases. The only other thing in Maven was one case of yeah. loose stool. Yeah. I don't know why that pops up in Maven. You might I, know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was a bacteria, like something. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know. If it was okay. But it was one case, and it's gone. Five. Five. It was like food port. You know, it could get some dumpster issues. Dumpster issues. That were corrected already, though you said. They were corrected. Yes. Okay. I would yeah. assume dumpster issues are an easy correction. <laughs> If you can get the dumpster company out there. Yeah, that's not our problem. That's yeah. the business problem. <laughs> right. Um, and as far as tobacco goes, all the compliance checks and inspections are done in April. So technically okay. it'll be on the next report, but I can give you the heads up and tell you that they all went smoothly. Everything went well? Okay, okay. good. Well, that's good. Got our money's worth on that one. Mm -hmm. Literally. Uh, anything else? No? Okay. Any questions? Um, okay, moving on. Um, we do not, well, I, I should say we somewhat have an update from town council. So I received a phone call today from the new chair to the select board, Vanessa Alvarado, and she had a brief discussion um, with town manager last night in town council because they were all at town meeting um, so they were all kind of in the same room so I need to reach out to town council there seems to be a con confusion in his office as to our intention and his according to what Vanessa was telling me depending on our intention drives the way he looks at it so um, she said she can get us on at you know one of the next upcoming meetings once we get this um, figured out. So I will reach out to town council. Um, I'll, I'll email Bob tomorrow and ask him um, to see if we can if uh, we can get a good time to set up to discuss that just to get our town council on board with what we were looking to do. Um, I think the problem came in where we changed um, how we enforce it. And this question, I think, is centering around: uh, you, Is this like a very? Is this a thing you're going full throttle with, or is this more of a, a kind of a pullback? We're, we're informational, but there is a component to it that if if you repeatedly do not, you know, heed the warnings, that you're going to be uh, fine. So he just, I think, he wants to be on the same page as what we were, and moving forward, then you can figure out, okay, what you have in front of you is either X, Y, and Z, and. What to go from there next? So we don't have a regular a update from him per se that says we're good, you're good to go or not. He still needs to just get some clarity on that. So uh, whether or not we're proposing a policy change or not. It's whether or not what the intention of the policy is. Um, my feelings, and, and you can tell me if that's different from anyone else on the board. I think we had a lot of discussion around this, and the feelings generally were around that. We do want to make sure that we're informing the public and making it very much a, um, uh, obviously making the policy, but it, making an educational policy first where we had, okay, the first, you know, kind of complaint we get, 
the issue the issuance of what our policy is and how we handle it is our reaction to it and then you really only get into fines thereafter uh, if you're continuing to offend after that point and it's and it's happening over and over again so um, he just wanted to make sure that it wasn't a um, that it wasn't a proactive thing that we're out there actively Certainly. meeting Lauren in her office mm -hmm. out there actively trying to figure this out yeah. or is it more like like he yeah. we just kept described okay this is a reactionary thing like it's a passive policy right the policy is in place but we're not like which he should know but he should know better that we don't have the manpower to go out there and, <laughs> <laughs> and do that second one um, but so I'll, I'll have the conversation with him and answer any questions he has in regards to it you know from what we talked about the last time we are where we would like to roll this out from an educational standpoint from a reactionary standpoint to complaints um, and, and let the policy drive you know uh, accordingly thereafer right and I the language that we worked that was really contingent upon complaints makes that part right and I think that's where the for him a little discrepancy came into play so I think it just he was looking for the intent that's the word that Vanessa kept uh, using so it sounds like that you know with, when you with attorneys intent matters <laughs> so I will I will tell him and, and convey to him what the board's um, uh, intent was when we when we voted on it last to send it to the select board or, or through his office to the select board and hopefully we'll get uh, on the docket in the next couple uh, months from um, with them and their meetings um, all right, next item we have the inspection tracking spreadsheet. Um, I know Emmy had sent us all an email. I didn't receive, anybody receive anything that said she was not going to be here this evening? No. Um, I did have a chance to look through it. Some of them are, um, are pretty interesting. Some of the, the what, when the towns handle it. Mm -hmm. um, it drove a whole lot of questions mm -hmm. um, that, that first came to my mind. Um, the, the first being implementation. Um, there seems to be a lot, there's a lot of information. I'm always hesitant, and especially in, probably more so in a town, I, I think I would be more hesitant than, than in a city. And I know that sounds strange, but where you have um, a smaller um, population as opposed to you know 100,000 people, I, I feel like it makes a difference with how you handle these things. It certainly makes a difference with how you can, from a uh, monetary standpoint, handle these things. Yeah. Sorry, ladies. Hey, um, Kevin, I'm sorry. She said 6:45. She'll be here. 6:45. Okay. Well, we'll we'll keep a okay. We'll keep a discussion open um, for a little bit in regards to it. So it sounds like she's around the corner. Um, so anyway, we were just going through um, getting up to the inspection tracking spreadsheet now, um, and I, and Emmy had shared with the board. Um, it's a pretty interesting way different towns and cities have been handling it over the years from a tracking standpoint. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my, my feeling all along, and I'd love to hear what the, the board's thoughts are, are is having information is sometimes a good thing and sometimes an overwhelming thing and, and sometimes a detrimental thing. Um, so I, I think, you know, to me it looks like there are other towns and cities that have certainly done something um, to this effect. In other words, somebody else has kind of already um, created this wheel, so to speak, and um, personally I think it's a tough thing to to get the, the questions answered to, though, um, as far as what are the costs uh, associated with having something we, we're talking about the, uh, the information that you had sent us in regards to the, the other towns and city oh. spreadsheets. So I, I had a lot of questions when I looked at it just from a standpoint of you know rolling it out. What are, what are the costs associated with it? Oh. What's the staff associated with it? Um, yeah. it's a, I'm assuming it's a software. Well, it doesn't have to be. That's so. Um, I I didn't choose the towns as being towns that were similar to Reading necessarily. I was choosing um, a range of options for how they display Yeah, there's diff different ways of so, displaying information. So like the new thing is just not going to happen, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, it's yeah. incredibly expensive. I was going to actually, that was, that was my favorite. It is. <laughs> no, it's amazing. I thought it was pretty good. But actually. I think they're, I think in the toolkit it maybe set, 
I think they had like a quote for how much it would cost. It was, it was oh, I didn't look through the toolkit part. Okay. Yeah, the toolkit part. <laughs> It's expensive, okay. and that is because there's a lot of there are the tablets for the inspections, but then there's also all this extra software that has to go into it. They do this whole fancy algorithm, which is lovely because it takes into account the nuances of um, inspection violations. You know, some yep. aren't as bad <laughs> as others. Um, so that was one thing I liked about it. But um, the way they did it isn't—I don't, I just don't foresee it being feasible from a financial perspective. From okay. Our tab. Yeah, that was one of my first questions right out of the gate. Yeah, obviously. that one's expensive. Um, so then we, there we was, have some limits. <laughs> right. So then, yeah, then there was Cambridge, and they—I think there's also must be tablet based. That it, my guess, and it, they have us. I'm assuming it's a software transfer of the data from the inspection forms that just gets uploaded directly to the website. Yeah, it shows a, a front of the site, back of the site, one by the health yeah. agent. Right. And then, what were the other ones? East Longmeadow, they, um, they basically upload summary sheets. Um, Summary inspections, date by date, oh, right? Um, that you just click on, um, which is pretty relatively simple and straightforward. PDF. Yeah, I saw that one too. And then the last one was Milford, which is a much smaller community, and they basically offer summary reports that are. Um, accessible to the public without having to go through like a FOIA request process. And so they had their local paper publish it. But it's small because it's a small, it's a small community. community it's, sure. it's an easy thing to do that way. Um, but so there are a range of options. Was it the Newton one that had the um, collaboration with the businesses in town? Yes, right? and I like how they did their rollout. Yeah. Um, they, so they did, because theirs was a very complicated scoring system, they, they actually did a round of inspections where they sort of told them what their score would be without it actually being public. Okay. So that they would have an idea of what it would really look like and have the opportunity on the next round to, you know. Okay. Get in the game. <laughs> you get a freebie. Um, yeah, they get a freebie. Gotcha. Basically, which is nice. Um, I think it made the businesses feel more comfortable. Yeah, I would say any kind of system, especially one like that, a rollout would be the you know, yeah. crucial component to it so. all, how, yeah. you, how you actually do it. I think right? there are ways to, yeah, to work with businesses on that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my initial thought off of looking at this, and um, I, I personally don't feel like I have um, the information or just even asking questions here of fellow board members to get a really good answer for something that would work for Reading. Mm -hmm. um, so I always thought that, you know, somebody else has probably created that wheel at some point in time that it's a, that there's you know, folks out there that you can bring in, hire consultants, outside consultants that we can possibly look to bring in that could help us, you know, fiddle our way you know, through this rather than just being the ones who drive the bus, have somebody tell us what the best way to drive it would be. Um, just somebody that's kind of ingrained into this type of discipline, so to speak. That was my kind of initial feelings on it. Yeah, I think it's interesting. You know, Massachusetts is um, unusual because we're so decentralized with our health departments. So I think that's part of where you're not getting consensus among sure. towns for how they're how they roll this out I think all of these um, towns have done this instituted this in less than the last five years maybe okay. in three years they're all very very recent 
um, and that's a new trend here. Other, pl other states that have more centralized health services, I think um, Vermont, uh, Utah, there, there are a lot of states that do this, um, but um, Colorado maybe, um, that, you know, on a state level, it's a little bit easier. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> um, a little more consistent. It's more consistent. Um, Vermont does a thing, uh, and there was another place, I'll have to look it up, but Vermont does a thing where they sort of show you a sample inspection report and they sort of flag the areas that are important and the areas, so it's how to read an inspection report. Okay. And then they basically just put out all of that information for all of the inspections everywhere in the state you can just search for them on a portal. Um, it's, if, so if we're gonna not go sort of a Newton path of making it very consumable, the other path would be to sort of have a way of educating the public on what the inspection. It seems problematic. Or me. And I'll show, I can show you. <laughs> That's I, I apologize. I wasn't here last yep. month. I feel like I don't have a clear understanding of like what the problem is. And I feel like we're jumping to designing the solution without under having a clear understanding of like what the problem is and like what we're trying to solve for. Like more data is always better. But like how are we going to use that data? And like for what purpose? Yeah, when I was reading through and looking at all these examples, I was thinking, what is it that we need to post? And so that led me to the, is that what it stands for? The guidelines for what we need to make public. And it just yeah. says yeah. inspections. Um, let me see if I can pull it up inspection reports and you're supposed to retain them and make them public until superseded by a subsequent report. So it just says inspection reports. It doesn't say what information that is contained within those that right. need to be made public. Yeah. So it seems like some towns have chosen to provide a ton and some a little bit less. And so right. are you thinking the route of educating the public on how to read the report and just posting the whole report was a way to make it easier administratively so that no one had to sort of select the key things from a report. Yes, although I don't know, do we have, is there any, all of that should be public, right? Yeah, all of that. Everything on an inspection report is, I guess, okay. it must be public. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so that is one way of just yeah, just uploading the whole report. the whole report, and then having something that says how Here. to read it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, this is really put it up on there. Yeah. Hey, put it up on the screen if you want. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me find something other than that PDF. Okay. Something that I can actually type in. Uh, okay, how does this thing work? Where is well, the, Where are you trying to go? I would have to go to the internet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where is the mouse? Uh, is that Google Chrome? Yes. Oh, oh, right in the oh sorry. <laughs> yeah, that works. Okay. It's a little better in case anyone's watching it from home too. It's a lot. Oh, they can see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. We got it's got right over there right now. Okay. Sorry. This is. <laughs> okay. Oh. Does that say Vermont? I can't see it from here. Yep. I hope so. <laughs> Easier to digest. For, easier or to, to access. access. Okay. Yeah. 
Got it. Right now you have to do, uh, I think, a formal records request. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so this is their portal, but here is their guide to reading a food inspection. Kevin, and to your point, you want to be sensitive to the size of our community and, you know, the considerations of both residents, constituents, and, you know, business constituents. Correct? Yeah, I mean, this is always something that I, I always look from if you're going to do it, who's going to be affected by it, how, how are they going to be affected by it, and, you know, that, that to me always drives my the way I think about what's the best implementation for something like this. Is it, you know, whether it's a full on or a partial or some, you know, derivative um, of other towns and cities, what they've done. Yeah. I just always think it's an important component to, to look at and to take into account um, that all stakeholders have a chance to, you know, talk about something like this, if you're going to be putting out public information that's yeah. readily easy, easy to get at. Yeah. You know, the, the thought we've had in the past is, you know, we know that we get complaints that aren't necessarily um, on the up and up mm -hmm. as far as the complaint, uh, the person lodging the complaint goes. Mm -hmm. That's happens, it happens in every town and city, yeah. we're no different than, than anywhere. So it, it's difficult to have that kind of information out there as a complaint to look at. Right when it actually wasn't anything at all, right? right? So yeah. it's, it's just a tough it's thing a to, to look at. Yeah, it is, yeah. it's kind of a fine line. So I, I just wanna make sure that we're very sensitive to that. Yeah, I think fact. my vision for this was more for the routine inspections. Mm -hmm. not okay. Not complaint-driven inspections necessarily. Okay, so this would be just from Laura's standpoint going out on a monthly basis hitting the, her um, routine inspections that she yeah. needs to hit. I mean, we could do complaint based. I mean, if there is that concern. Well, we're talking about access, right? That's what you guys just right. said. It's about making the information more available. Accessible. Right. So how are we gonna, how are we going to take what we already have and put it up there? And then if we want to expand the right. types of information, yeah. that's a separate like project or initiative. Maybe. I think so too. And then you get into maintenance of, of something like that as well right. too, which is a component that we always have to keep in mind. We have, yeah. you know, from a staff standpoint, we don't have a big staff, so um, you don't want to get to the point where the maintenance of something is preventing other real public health things from occurring at the same time. Yeah, right? like, so, like cost is not just money, but like manpower hours. Yeah. Right. So again, that's why I was made the comment that, you know, I, I personally don't feel comfortable rolling something out or being part of some uh, rolling this out that's why i said you know having a third party that kind of deals in this stuff is is, is the best way to go about it mm -hmm. um you know you can you can have somebody that they can come in and tell you based on how you're made up what you're looking to do you know what's the best avenue to to help you know roll it out and, and implement it if that's what you intend to do with and, and want to end up deciding to do with it i mean Following the Newton model, do we want to like ask business food business owners if they want to collaborate and have their opinion be heard? I think you'd have to. Okay. And right. Who would do that? And that's the who would who would run that? Yeah. So 150 food establishments. Yes. Wow. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't have expected that. Right. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how Newton did it. If they sort of had a public announcement and just saw how many people came to the table, or if we would say we're seeking two collaborators for the food business community. Is David Naparstek still at the Newton director of health? Oh, um, I don't know. I do. He he was maybe about ten years ago, <laughs> um, but I might be able to find his contact information. Find out. And this is some. What, what is he? He he may have been involved in, in rolling this out. He oh, and see and see what how he, they did it. Yeah, if he was involved. Yeah, I, I I feel better having somebody come in and tell us what to do. Quite frankly, mm -hmm. you know, and, and run the show because it's going to be difficult for us as a board to really. This is. The, I think this to do a really effective job and do. A, uh, the correct job. It's a it's a lot of work. Um, it seems like to get it out. Now, once you get it, once you figure out what you can and can't do, you know, you decide if you want to do it or not. 
I, I think once you get to that point, it, it becomes a little bit easier when you have all the data in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, but getting that, you know, getting to the point where you have all that data to make a good decision on what to do, I find it. The, the more I thought about, the more I kind of got overwhelmed with the amount of work that it's going to take to do that. Mm -hmm. That's why I suggest you know, have, hiring a consultant to come in and, and run the show, to me, seems the simplest answer. I guess I was just thinking sample. Right. <laughs> like, like yeah. load. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Which is start what I mean. quite simple. Yeah. And if we want to make it more elaborate, that can be a project. Mm -hmm. But. Mm -hmm doesn't have to be but we may even need a website designer if we're uploading it so people can access well it could just be presumably it could just be like an excel spreadsheet that we upload i mean i don't know who those links on our or it could, i mean it could be like the um east what the east long meadow people do right and that which is it doesn't, they did a summary, you could do the inspection report. Um, do we want to show that one too? Okay, yeah. It's basically they just list on their website all of the food establishments, mm -hmm. and then you just click on it and it opens up the most recent inspection report. But I feel like it's a reduced inspection report. It's not, okay. it's just a summary. It's yeah, a summary it's not a full. Like three things. So that would require it. Which I, yeah, which I wonder if. I don't know. Yeah. Think automated. Yeah. Yeah. We don't but I don't think we have ones here, do we? Like, we do not have ones in Connecticut. I know that some places. Did Boston do that? or Boston does Boston, have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think they just started that a couple of years ago. Goes to school. Yeah, they have it all. Cause that's a, I don't know, that's good because if you go to the A, A is the best, B, you know, yeah. you know that. Yeah, I think that makes it much more <laughs> easily easy to understand. Yeah, we yeah. have that in Georgia. Mm -hmm. LA has that, New York has that. Oh, do they? New York has that. I go back to my, like, what what's the problem we're trying to solve? Like, I think, yes, I wholeheartedly agree grading food establishments is a great idea, but, like, is that... Is that the problem? Like, are we seeing people complaining? Are we seeing people like unsure, un unsure about the like how like the quality of a food? Right. <laughs> so I think a lot of these things we don't necessarily know, and it doesn't have to be a problem. I, for me, it was that I. I looked for the information and I couldn't get the information, okay. right? And I think if the state ever has questions, mm -hmm. if a resident ever has questions, if a select board member ever has a question or the town manager ever has a question, it would be nice to be able to easily access yeah. that information. Yeah. Um, and we didn't have, everything is in paper copies as it is in almost all of Massachusetts and it's so it's getting it online what we're trying to yes that's the, the access and getting it online yeah. is like what I'm hearing okay cool that makes <laughs> more sense. it like clarifies the intent okay. the intent <laughs> Yeah, but I don't think most people are going to go, oh, I want to see all your inspection reports for the last nine years, like, for example, you wanted to. Like, most people go, oh, what's going on at XYZ? And they want to see the history of that particular location. They don't want nine years of information. Right. On every, right. 130 places times twice a year times nine years. All right. And I think the only thing we're required to do is have the most current one posted. It just says retain until superseded by subsequent right. report. So that would have been... So that's one report. So that's you know, one, one report. So that's, mm -hmm. it's every six months, right? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> but I believe your request was going back nine or ten years. My request was going back three. Three years. Mr. Chair. May. You may. Thank you. Um, the way it was done earlier with really no technology was that um, the information would be made public um, by the health inspector reporting. I did X or we did X many inspections 
uh, this during this time frame, uh, we found X many violations, and um, in, in that format, mm -hmm. you know, just okay. so that you would be able to answer to the state saying mm -hmm. we're confident that things are being inspected and. Um, um, if any violations were found and how they were followed up on, um, stuff like that. It, um, this is a public meeting, so if you do it in that format, you don't need to. You don't need to get into uh, software programs are nice. I'm not sure how much money the town has in excess. Yeah, that's one of my questions, right? Exactly. I can tell you, we have not. <laughs> so, like, not in yeah. my budget anyway. Yeah. So, the hiring a third party would that be doable or? Um, so it depends what happens in town, town meeting. Town meeting. Uh, well, we actually have something in town meeting for outsourced professional services. Okay. So, um, depending on. <clears throat> mean that they're voting on this at this town meeting. Um. We actually, I think they voted it last night on some, moving some money around for FY19. I think that was voted on. Okay. So, um, between now and June 30th, depending on what the scope would be and how much money it would require, I think we could find a small amount of money. I okay. can't promise anything, but I can certainly do my best to roll up my sleeves and go looking. Well, we first, I guess the first thing you'd have to do is find out what what kind of money you'd be looking into. Mm -hmm. It may not be that much. I think the master plan we hired Peg Salady. You were on the board then, yes, right? Yes, that was a that was that a master was, plan yeah. for the entire sort of forward what we didn't have and what we would do yeah. for in a forward. And I don't way. I don't remember the amount, but I remember it being on on the lower end. Yeah. And that was yeah. for a yeah. pretty. And that was for a master plan. plan? Yeah. That was for a master. So this would be like one aspect of master. Exactly. Plan. Yeah. But it, but again, <coughs> cost wise, right? You don't. It doesn't sound always like being cognizant of spending money from the town and trying to get the, the most out of our override dollars. Um, this is something in the past that was just it was report it was a report given to the uh, board of health, and therefore it, be, it became public and it listed. Uh, restaurants inspected, violations, no violations, repeat violations, things like that. Inspection. And sometimes we would see the the uh, inspection reports. Okay. <coughs> but that doesn't really cost any money. It just is, um, you know, just the health agent. So exactly what we do now, just you'd add a line that says how many violations were found and if they were corrected. Well, I, I think I would leave it for the board to decide what information that we're looking for. But if you do it on a monthly basis, it's not, um, they were never a huge number of restaurants inspected and, and the health agent simply wrote them up. But it, would it say oh, yeah. the name of the business? Yeah, and yeah sometimes, so sometimes it, 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 it varied, but that's again for you guys to determine. Yeah. And uh, you, the, the the health inspection reports are public, and you can ask to see examples of them. So that give you a feel for what health inspections are like. Um, but but they are public knowledge by by law. Mm -hmm. so. Right. Okay. So we've got some low tech and high tech options. <laughs> So it sounds like we need to crystallize the type of information we're seeking to get online. Mm -hmm. Like what are the discrete data points that we think are valuable to right. residents in just education, notification, awareness? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I probably looked at the Newton website more than the others, but I'm reminded of, um, I think they had some research showing that foodborne illness declined after they made this easy to understand map. Mm -hmm. So if that were also to be true in Reading, mm -hmm. you know, if we were to make similar information available, maybe not the map, yeah. but some of the same contents, yep. um, then maybe we could expect foodborne illness to decrease. Do we, we have, have a high? Right, but yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> like we don't have 
everybody food board right. on this. That's Wait a not minute. the problem we're trying to solve. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and so you can just download the report, make it a PDF file, and get it online, or you don't want to show the whole report? Is that one? I think, I yeah, it sounds like we wanted to be sensitive about like what data maybe, okay. I think, if I'm hearing correctly. Yeah, you could also drive it off of a certain threshold to report. Oh, yeah. Like, is there five or more? Yeah, I, I guess we could probably make it anything we, you know, we chose to. Um, but that's one way to make sure, you know, to make it that it's not just a, you know, a complaint wouldn't be a threshold. Yeah, I mean, right? there are some... So I think Ba, I didn't send Boston, but I think ba, so Boston does the letter grade, but they also will sometimes, like you, if you search for the restaurant, they'll give you the date and just say no violations. Okay. And then I guess if it's no violations, you, it's not like you need the full inspection report uploaded. Right. But... This one is East Long Meadow. So this is the one where they have the PDFs that are the summaries, sort of a, an official summary. I wonder if that is gen. I wonder. I don't know if that's typed in or if that's generated. If they have tablet. Yeah, it looks like it's only things that were found to be in violation. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. You know, listing everything. Which is what Cambridge does, and I think what Boston does, other than saying a date and no violation. Um, yeah, so I don't know if, if they. I haven't gone through and clicked on every <laughs> every single one, so I don't know if they if these are all of their restaurants or if they're all, or if they're only even putting information on for restaurants that had violations. Mm -hmm. But it would be pretty easy to reach out. Um, all right. Um. For me, the important information. <laughs> for me, the important information would be business name, address, date of inspection, um, uh, violations. But I would ideally want to have a way of differentiating between critical violations and all of the others, which is in um, to make it their policy because we have different lines for yeah. those critical Because I think that would also make Help it easier with the public. Right. Um, and then date of reinspection, if a reinspection is warranted and were the violations corrected at that time. So that would be <clears throat> going back to reports to add on the date of like date of upcoming respect inspection and then they go back to that same report rather than just replacing it with a new report which is because that's yeah what, I, so I, yeah you want some way to track it. this yeah. restaurant has mm -hmm. so I think so many violations which so is East Long Meadow does have like a reinspection um, so it's just they only have one PDF that you download, and it's either named as inspection or reinspection, or you can see the whole history. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's either named as okay that or reinspection, but it would probably be better if they were linked somehow, or just which might get more complicated. Might get more complicated. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so this just goes down to. I'm just trying to so, think of how we roll, how you roll something like that out. What 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 would be, what it would entail, right? Is this, or is this something that? Whatever you guys want to do. Is. So this would be all on the website. 
essentially, or is this? I, I think so. Well, this is going to have an impact on businesses. I like the comment that was made earlier about working with the business community first. Mm -hmm. Um, because it just seems like that's a critical piece of mm -hmm. yeah, I, I like how that to. collaborative yeah. spirit right says we're yeah. doing this in we're doing this to together public health exactly. right. I agree yeah. Yeah. Yes. no I agree yeah because I, I looked at Milford and if I was in Milford I would drive to whatever was after Milford City <laughs> and that's already an hour and ten minutes from here and I, I reviewed some of those forms and I'm like oh, I'll never eat in Milford <laughs> Yeah, we yeah, don't, we don't a, want to have a, a chilling effect. No, I think it's definitely good to bring in business. Yeah. Maybe yeah. the chamber would be a resource. Um, I, would, I would remind you, though, that your primary mission is to protect. Yeah, right. Yeah, but I, um, I think you can do both. And, and, and it's fine to, you know, um, be, try to be business friendly and work with businesses, absolutely. Um, but um, yeah, but in that degree too, having the inspections is protecting public health. I'm sorry. Yeah. Having the inspections already being done, that is that is fulfilling the role of protecting public health. It's not like we're not inspecting, right? So it's not. It, it's just you know having having the problem clarified, if there is one, and fixed, which seems to happen on a regular basis. To, to me, is more than fulfilling what we're supposed to be doing. Well, and there has to be some transparency to that so you can demonstrate that you're actually fulfilling those. Uh, Wouldn't you know, that be my health. report when I say I did the inspection well, and the reinspection? That's the health agent's report, pretty much. That's their role. But I do think more transparency could happen with like the kind of example that you sent around. And I think to your point that I think bringing the two parties together, businesses and the Board of Public Health, allows us to have a conversation where the board says our primary goal is to protect public health, mm -hmm. but we're also interested in working with you collaboratively. Mm -hmm. And they say, we definitely want our food to be safe, but you know, our primary goal is we need to be sustainable as a business. So mm -hmm. to the extent that we could do that, I think it makes almost a stronger voice for protecting public health when we can have a clear priority stated when working with businesses rather than surprising them. <laughs> You know, yeah. I think I need to know. I think we do want to be transparent. So, so isn't doing the inspection and having their inspection reports public, public already? Already is not transparent. No, I think it is. I think it could be made more easily accessible. Like I know where I grew up, every restaurant had a food grade that was easy to see and if we're not you get, advocating for that just now. just because I've worked with the food grade so if you come in if I come in and I give you a D you have 10 days to become compliant I come back in 10 days and I've already told you what your issues are so you correct them I come back I give you an A that's your grade till the next six months has passed mm -hmm. whether you stay compliant or not Right. So I think that's a. I think the grade is a false sense of security. Oh, that's an interesting look at it. I didn't think about that. Like the grade is only valuable for ten to the days. most recent right. inspections. What? How long is it be? That because I've definitely seen these. You must have caught them in that window. So is the ten day the state uh, state? Yeah, it's right okay. at the bottom of the right hand form of the form. Okay. Yeah. So as long as you hit the restaurant that's within that ten time. days. You're getting what the grade was after the 10 days and they've corrected it, mm -hmm. then you get an A. So then, unless they don't correct it. So making the food inspections public would be even more important for people to be able to see, oh, 10 days ago, they the are restaurant public. had a D. I mean, easily accessible so that people can see, oh, mm -hmm. five days ago, yeah. this restaurant was a D and now it's an A. Yeah, I mean, Laura is is correct, at least from my experience, and, and um, you know, they do repeat inspections um, throughout the year, and so it, 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 it could be seen as misleading of, of, of they get a good grade or a bad grade, and then they fix their problem and they're stuck with that grade until um, the next round. Yeah. Um, and yeah. That's sorry, all. I don't mean to interrupt. I was just thinking that thinking back to when I had that information at the 
easily available mm-hmm. as a consumer. I would mm-hmm. use yep. it, but I understand. I mean, I'm not advocating that we oh, do no. food grades right whatever. now either. Um, just that, in personal experience, it was useful for me to see easily and clearly, and I don't know if our residents would feel the same way, but I imagine some would. Back to Jean's point about bringing the community and bringing the businesses together. Yeah. Like, they are probably aware that this information is already public. It's just you have to go through the hassle of yeah. doing a formal document request, and yeah. by us making it much more accessible and easier to use, they need to be aware of that yeah. because they likely will be judged on those inspection reports. Um, more than they have in the past. Do you have to do a formal document request if you just come in and ask for one, like to see a file? If you just no. came in and picked uh-huh. X, Y, Z and you wanted to see the file, you could, you we hand them. you the file, like a building yeah. file, a plumbing yeah. file, electrical file, food yeah. file, they're all the same. All and you can, files. Yeah. And you make come to the counter. You can come to the counter file. tomorrow morning and ask yeah. for X, Y, Z and we'll so hand you the file. Does that, cause right. they do. If do they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. During oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. No, because if, um, places are doing a, uh, an event in another town. They need their last inspection report. They need their permit from here. Okay. I get them all the time. But I usually get ones, ones or at the most fives. Yeah. She asked for three years of entire files. Mm-hmm. It was a little bit more time consuming. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I don't want to get too deep into this tonight because it seems like there's more questions than answers um, here. So just to get a kind of sense from the board, um, it seems like there's a, a willingness to do some kind of data tracking when it comes to these inspection reports that is readily accessible. Mm-hmm. Is that kind of, okay. Yeah. Um, so along those lines, there's going to be a number of discussion points for us, my, my guess would be you know, by number, I'm talking about number of meetings, <laughs> rather, unless we want to be here for a, a one long journey of a meeting one night, um, as well as trying to bring in, uh, I, I think I agree with Gene as well too, bringing in things sensitive to bringing in um, the public as, as a whole, especially businesses that will have a direct effect by this. Um, there are always things we don't, we don't see um, when we're, we're trying to devise these things. There's always mm-hmm. complications that arise that, you know, having having other eyes on it, having other ears on it, having people that are going to be directly involved with it may have a perspective on it, uh, change things. So, you know, if we want to go down this avenue, I just want to make sure that we get it right. I, you know, sometimes in government, there's things you can roll out and you can fix on the fly. And no matter what we do, I guess that that's that could happen in this degree too. But I'd want to try to get it really, <laughs> you know, really right out of the gate as best we can, um, and not have it be in that degree because we are talking about um, um, residents and businesses in town that are going to be directly affected by uh, the outcomes uh, of having this. So. Um, not to a large degree, but from a public health standpoint, uh, to Andy's point, you know, that, that to me should be the first and foremost thing we, we look at. Let's make sure that we get that aspect of it right um, and then see where we are from there. Is that something where we invite people to a Board of Health meeting or is that a public hearing? Public hearings generally are for like the implement, uh, right when you have a policy after. that you're going to roll know, out, this really isn't I'm, a policy so much as a. Um, <laughs> this seems more like just a, a way we want our health agent to do reporting so um that's not really a policy thing i mean she, she, uh, laura's our health agent she um will report in the manner in which we that we um, need her to so um i don't think you do anything as formal as that as a hearing but there has to be some kind of collabor- collaborative meeting I, I guess would be the best thing and the best way to do that is escaping me right now um, certainly talking to the chamber would be one, uh, publicizing it for public consumption um, with whatever means we have available to us um, could be another one and uh, on top of that. So I, I think we need to, ha- if you're going to have something like that, you really, it's difficult to, um, I guess it's difficult to have because it's such a, f- a moving part right now. We don't really have anything that we have an idea 
uh, but we don't have really have anything concrete and we actually haven't discussed the parts of that idea uh, as a board so maybe that's the first step it's just you know pull apart the idea itself it's going to have several components to it um, obviously it was we know implementation is going to be one of the thresholds that maybe uh, could be another part of it um, that we want to get down and then and then maybe have that kind of meeting and say, this is what we're thinking about doing from a green standpoint. Here are the effects it could have on the community, positive and negative, and we want to get input back from you um, as a community member as to what your thoughts are on it. Um, and look at it from that standpoint. But that's one way to do it. That's why, again, when I said originally bring, you know, bringing the consultant, sometimes it's easier to do all that for you um, rather, than, rather than the board trying to do it all. But again, that's uh, as, as Andy pointed out and, and uh, Gene pointed out, money money becomes a, a factor. I kind of still would like to know what kind of money. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like saying no without at least knowing what that what, what the answer is to that. I think we look, look, look back and see what we. I, I remember it wasn't a lot of money. Okay. I don't just don't have the number off the top of my head, but I can do a little bit of research and see. Is that the same person that we read? I think Peg worked out great. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's still doing that kind of work. I actually called her after that on another project, um, but she was tied up with something else. Um, but I think the experience was very good yeah. with Peg's yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I just don't very quick. They don't I want us running really around with ideas that are quick. problematic. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody can just say, wait, that's problematic, and yeah. we can yeah. move on from it. And, you know, and I, I just want to make sure that, again, that we get it right mm -hmm. as best we can. Obviously, you change things on the fly no matter what, no matter how good work you put into something um, after you've implemented it. So um, that's just my my kind of thoughts. I'd love to hear anybody else's. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think we can all sort of spend the next month or whatever in since we can't talk <laughs> independently. God, when is the charter coming up for review? Uh -huh. <laughs> killing me three people. I know. Yeah, for <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think we definitely we could spend the next you know month between. We'll put it on again. You know, it sounds like we'll probably have this on in the next few meetings as a discussion point, right? So just so we we have it, um, and then I, I think um, I'll uh, well I can have Laura can report back to the board as far as if, if um, what's her name? What's the girl's name? Peg Salad. His name um, Peg Salad. Okay. See if she's still in the business of of uh, helping towns and cities. Um, she's extremely knowledgeable. Is she? Oh, I, I like that even better. Yeah. 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 She yes. ran a very nice public process too, yeah. which was even and it was quick. Yeah. Even if we just asked her to come in for a meeting yeah. and just bounce stuff yeah. off for you know just to just to get yeah. the process yes. going. Um, is somebody that again? I, don't, I hate recreating the wheel. <laughs> you, know, you spend a lot of time and energy when someone can just go, oh, I've already done that, come here. <laughs> um, so that that's my kind of take on that part of it. I think, we've, I think it'd be beneficial. And at the end of it, if you take the information, it's not like you run with everything that the person's providing for us. We take it, we, we see what we like, what we don't like, and we, you know, we come up with a, a good working plan for it. I think it's a, you get a better product in the end that way. Would this be, forgive me for not knowing, this is, might be very basic, would this be during one of our Board of Health meetings? Like, it's possible she might attend the next one? Yeah, it'd be great to reach out to her and see if she wouldn't mind attending. I don't know, you know, maybe that comes with a fee as well, too. We'll find that out. <laughs> we can work it out. Okay. Okay. So then we need to think about what day do we want to make more accessible ideas for how to make it accessible, and then, oh, how would we want to bring in business? If we do, yeah, it just seems like we do. Um, so that's what our, that's what we think about for the next month, and then hopefully we can talk to. Kind of get our yeah, we'll we'll, we'll we'll find out. I'm sure <laughs> okay. uh, we'll get an email one way or the other whether it's going to happen or not, or what the schedule is, and if we need to. Um, by all means, if we need to adapt our schedule around hers, if she's willing to come out, you know, we'll see what we can do there too. The one, one of the few things we can do is email each other about scheduling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any other thoughts on the topic? Okay, seeing none, move on to review mint of um, 
March 25th, 2019. Everybody have a chance to look over uh, the minutes? Or do you need a minute? <laughs> the only thing I wanted to slightly change, okay, let's see. Second page, second page, the first full paragraph. Um, uh, I just want to clarify that I wasn't. Which line are you looking at? Dove brought up the discussion about wanting the sick policy okay. for Birch Meadows School to be amended. I wasn't actually saying that we definitely should change the sick policy. I was saying that we should have a discussion about whether it made sense to consider that. Just a slight clarification on that. So, uh, so Dove brought up the discussion about uh, Dove. Do we? You brought up this. Do we want to? Didn't you bring it up as? Do we, do we want to discuss it? this? And then I think it was mentioned that that's really a, um, a school committee. Yeah, I, I said. Right? Do that? we want to? Um, if the Board of Health wanted to do we discuss. Want, uh, Sick policy. Yeah. So Dev brought up if the Board of Health wanted to discuss the sick policy. Yeah, not that it wanted to be amended. Is that where you're going with that? I mean, yeah, I, I just thought. Just that, do we want to discuss it? Do we want to discuss whether it would make sense? <laughs> okay. So how do you have that? Change no. on that. Someone wouldn't mind reading. Uh, Deb brought up if the Board of Health wanted to discuss the SIP policy for the Birch Meadow School, not that. That will replace the not first that line it in that paragraph. To be amended. Okay. Yeah. So we're replacing the first line in that paragraph yep. with yep. that language. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm rusty on my amendments. And do I need a motion to accept that? No, you just have to set the whole thing as amended, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I did I notice just lost one thing actually on the front page. Yeah. 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 Hold on. All right. <laughs> it wasn't a public hearing. Uh, Under purpose. Where are we? Purpose. No, the very top. template on the top says public hearing, and it should say open meeting. Open meeting. Oh, good catch. <laughs> Our general business. I should say general business. Okay. Yep. Okay. Any others? All right. Sorry, none. I will uh, entertain a motion to accept the minutes from March 25th, 2019 as amended. So moved. Thank you. <laughs> it wasn't Seconded? Second. You can second. It's all right. Even if right. you weren't here, it's okay. Right. 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 All wrong. All those in favor? <laughs> Three zero. Okay. Unless anyone has anything other than they wanted to mention. Um, yeah, to uh, uh, quick, quick questions okay. that I do at all my meetings. Um, just to remind the members that are up for reappointment. Okay. Um, to that, to if you want to re up, hopefully, um, to to get your application in with the town, and then it gets we're going into that. Seat. Oh, right, we're coming into, um, yeah, because you usually do that in June, right? Uh, yeah, May, we'll, June. Yeah, ultimately, we do that in June, but the interviews are in May. They're in May, okay. Um, do we have anybody coming up? So, yes, uh, according to the webpage. Eleanor is up, yep. and um, Heidi is up. Okay. So uh, hopefully you'll reapply, but that's up to you. And, and uh, <laughs> you did. Okay. And okay. then, um, and then you'll go. To, you'll be asked to be interviewed by the mass. I just wanted to make sure no one missed it. Oh, thank you very much. Good, good catch. And because I came in a little late, Kevin, um, would you mind just? Was there an update from town council about the pesticide oh, regulations? Oh, um, yeah. So um, I, I did mention that um, 
town manager, town council, mm -hmm. uh, the incoming chair, um, Vanessa, mm -hmm. um, talked quickly last night. We don't have an update as far as you're good to go or you need to change things. Ray needs more information, it sounded like, from the conversation I had with Vanessa. And so I'm going to reach out to Ray's office to clarify for him exactly what we're looking at. He seems to have a little, um, there seems to be some confusion around what the, the board's intent was, and he said it will drive him in a different direction to, okay. to know what that intent is. So I'm just going to let him know what our discussions were in regards to it. Okay. Uh, it sounded like from a, um, the, the one small section that we changed um, from enforcement standpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we should hopefully be able to get him to then look at that the way he needs to and get on get on with the select board okay. in, the, in the coming months. Okay. Um, so we're just looking at the calendar. It looks like our next meeting is May 20th, and that's also scheduled for the VASC. So Board of Health meets at 6, and VASC meets at 7. Can we meet at 5.30? Well, no, that's you okay. If we meet at six, yeah. we'll, we'll make sure we're out of here at seven. <laughs> How's that? I like that. <laughs> and whoever needs to go walk over to the vast, they're already here. That, it, to it me, that it doesn't have to be at seven. You can no, say I'd like to be right. interviewed at seven thirty. Well, yeah, yeah. It'll be a bunch of we try to be as flexible as possible. We have a lot of people yeah, but I mean, since it, I, that, I might just make it easier since you're already in the building. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Anything else? So next meeting, May 20, 6 p.m.? 26 p.m. Yeah. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> All those in favor? Or who second? I'm sorry. Second. <laughs> All those seconds. All those in favor, 3-0. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.